Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about our two and a half gallon foam extinguisher. It's made by Amorex, US made, high quality, stainless steel, and it's really a substantial piece of equipment that you can see. And um, the thing that makes it unique is the Novacool, because nobody else is filling it with Novacool. What you got to do is take the uh, middle stem out of the uh, extinguisher. It has a knurled knob which means it's kind of got like a texture to it, and it spins by itself with the middle being, um, we just leave it that way. So what you're really doing is just spinning that uh, knurled knob off. And once you get it out, whoops, get that later, put the uh, prepackaged Nova Cool in there, or pre-measured, it's just about an ounce. So. And then uh, we need to fill it with water. So what I've done is, since we're filling these all the time, is I have a two and a half gallon, or it's actually a two gallon bucket. This is made for two and a half gallons. And when they say that, they're not fooling around. If you get too much in there, um, you can have problems like with the uh, water starting to come out the valve when you start to approach the amount of pressure that you need. Okay, this bucket's marked at two gallons. So I just went ahead and filled it to two gallons. So then I've got the half gallon in here. Again, it's marked on the inside of the bucket, pretty handy. But if you don't have a bucket like this on hand, most people have these like quart containers. And they're really cool because they're all standard. That if you just fill up to that line, that's 32 ounces. If you take that 10 times, that gives you uh, two and a half gallons. So, you know, it's a little more tedious, but certainly uh, doable. And, uh, now we're ready to we put the caps back on this just so I don't get any uh, dust or dirt in there. And my clean funnel from our folks down there in Clovis, New Mexico. The guy's been making those for probably close to 25 years. What a nice uh, item it is to have. Okay, once we do that, then since we're already on the ground, I'm just going to go ahead and put the stem in there, and when you do that, you just want to be aware that there's this bracket back here in the back. That's going to be your wall hanging bracket. So you want to make sure that the head stays parallel to that when you put it on. So you can tighten this down with your hands. It's just about as tight as you need it. And uh, you'll find when you start to fill it with air, you'll know whether it's tight enough or not. Or you can just take a pair of channel locks. What I do sometimes is take a rag and put it on there, and then I take the channel lock and tighten it down. Okay. So there we're ready for that. And now we're going to fill it. So now when you're getting ready to fill it, it's just like the valve stem on your car or truck. It's got a little um, cap that goes over the end. And you can have that out of the way. And this is just like the regular um, tire chuck that you would use on your uh, to fill your car tire. It's just a quick connect into your air pressure hose. So if you don't have a, uh, a compressor at home, you can always just take it down to the gas station and um, hopefully they'll have enough air pressure that you can do 100 PSI. If not, you might have to look around or find a uh, construction buddy. You know it's working because you can hear the air going in and turning up the, uh, the water that's in there. And make sure that the compressor that you're using can build up more than 100 pounds of pressure because that's what this is, uh, unit requires to be right in the middle of the Okay, gear. then when you're done and you got the air pressure where you want it, you just need to put that little cap back on there. Just another assurance to keep it from leaking. Looks like we don't have any leaks anywhere. And then you take this uh, key here 
and you're going to lift the handle on up. There you'll see there's a, a hole on the handle, and you just run that through there. And the way this old wire deal is, it seems like it's better if you do it on the uh, valve stem side, because the way the plastic is, it kind of keeps it going in that direction. So once now that that's in there, you can lift the whole deal and you won't be able to uh, accidentally uh, fire the extinguisher off. The next day or so, it's a good idea just to, you know, kind of keep, just to, you know, kind of keep an eye on that and make sure that it doesn't go down because you want to make sure that you've got a good solid seal on there. So there you go. There's our two and a half gallon foam filled fire extinguisher. And may you never have to use it. But if you do, you know that you've got the best solution that you can buy right here. Um, done it once, no problem. You do it. And you'll be able to save a lot of money in the long run by not having to go and have these recharged. And you can all easily monitor it. You know that if it's slipping down out of the green, you, know, you just need to fire up the compressor or take it down to the, the uh, gas station and have them put just enough air in there to take it up to the to the green. So when you're ready to discharge it, you pull the pin from the handle, which keeps you from inadvertently squeezing it uh, at any other time. And it's just a little demonstration purpose here, just to show you how high it can go. What kind of pressure you have with this fire extinguisher. It shoots 45 to 50 feet under that 100 PSI. And the beauty part is you can do this over and over again. Once you've used it and discharged it, you can uh, always recharge it again. You don't have to take it anywhere. You can do it all yourself. Now you've seen how.